Welcome back to the movie breakdown. I'm your host, Paul. This is a first reaction to the new Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. If you had listened to the recap and discuss regarding The Last Jedi, you'll probably have a clear idea of what I will think of this movie. After seeing it twice, it has its flaws, and the ending by far doesn't make any sense um, from a bloodline. Um, and this is definitely a spoiler, so boo-hoo if you haven't seen it. You shouldn't be listening to this if you haven't seen the movie. So, but one, Ryan Johnson screwed the pooch on Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker really, in my opinion, really addressed and clarified all of the fuck-ups that that movie established and made. J.J. is not the best director or the best writer, but what he established in The Force Awakens was not drawn upon in Last Jedi and the complete loss of of a movie like there's a whole movie that we've lost and I would have loved to lived in a world where JJ actually produced all three movies as a single arc and they wrote a single story as a three movie arc. But that doesn't exist. So what we have is basically a quarter and a half of a movie. So we have Rise of the um Force Awakens. Last Jedi in my opinion doesn't exist anymore. And we have Rise of Skywalker, which is basically 50% Movie 8 and 50% um, Movie 9. Bringing the Emperor back to me is definitely as most of the writers and critics is definitely they broke the screen, they broke the emergency door 100%. Um, but it also addresses a lot of the issues. I don't necessarily think that it just tarnishes the original the original three in any way because there's still peace for at least 30 years. There's still, you know, the, the Rebels still win in that movie. Uh, Vader still throws him down the shaft and... Is still allegedly dead. We still don't know if if it was even him. If if, if it's actually Snoke, if it's um not Snoke, if it's really the the Emperor, or if it was a clone of the Emperor. So it it wasn't addressed yet. So uh, hopefully that will be addressed in a book. So assuming he wasn't a clone and it was actually him, um, he still didn't. He wasn't around for 30, so he wasn't in power. So I don't think that mitigates anything that happened. They still won. The Republic was refounded. It was safe for a majority of time. But then, you know, like most things, you know, unless you... A garden is a perfect way, okay? You start off with a garden. If you don't continue to weed it and and keep the lanes properly, then everything's going to get all over the place, you know? I think it's kind of fitting that, yes, the story is very telling the same story, but it would have been nice that when Disney bought the Star Wars franchise, that they would have actually taken George Lucas's three treatments that allegedly was brokered as a deal part of the purchase of Lucas Films and actually made that three movie. 
And again, I would love to live in a universe where that actually happened. And if it is true that Bob Iger promised that he was going to base the movies on those three treatments and then lied to him to get the deal, he's a fucking asshole for doing that. And I hope that he rots in that cold grave for doing that because he literally killed the most incredible, engaging, most historical movie franchise there has ever been. But we don't live in a universe where that happened and we have to deal with what we have. We have two Star Wars lands that have no Luke or Leia anywhere to be seen, no Darth Vader, no Han, but you have Chewie walking around everywhere and you have a Mary Sue character named Ray, and you have Mr. Kyle Ren who makes three-year-olds scary but doesn't scare anyone over the age of three. As I addressed during our recap of The Last Jedi, what makes Darth Vader so scary is that you just know when he comes in the room that he is the leader, he runs the show. There is no argument. There's no waiver. And yes, there might be a leader above him, a supreme leader, but on that battleship, he is the leader. He is the controller. He is Darth Vader. During The Last Skywalker, you had one of his his one of his commanders become one of the spies. That would have never happened during Darth Vader. Are you fucking kidding me? That is the most ridiculous shit I ever heard in my entire life. That just shows they weren't scared of him. Fear. One of the things when you write a movie and you direct and you make a movie, building a character and instilling fear and writing a character that makes you not want to challenge him is hard to do. But also, if you do it right, it's so incredible. It makes you want to see what that guy's going to do because you never know what he's going to do. But they really made this kid. You know, Kyra Ren is just a bubbling stooge of a child that whines and cries and craps and slams things into doors and throws things around because he's a bumbling child and he's also not intimidating so if he's not intimidating how can he be the biggest bad guy in this entire three movie arc to me rise of skywalker is the movie that we should have had for last jedi and if we could have had that story more fleshed out and then had, I, I don't like Rise of Skywalker. One, no disrespect, Mary Sue slash Ray. You are not, you're, you're not a Skywalker. Um, you, you are a Papalatine, 100%. And in all sincerity, um, even though that Ben gave you his life force, you still don't have his blood. It would have been nice that if they had the story written out that you were Luke's daughter. And it would have been fitting that you had been Luke's daughter. It would make so much sense that you would be Luke's daughter. Why does the lightsaber call out to you in The Force Awakens? Why? There is no reason but because you are Luke's daughter. And that makes total sense why Luke would have left you on that island, on that planet. I mean that that totally makes sense. And yes, Luke would have Luke would have gone off to another planet to keep you safe, just like he just like 
they did for him and his sister. And I think that's what we're missing from J.J. leaving and not writing a three-movie arc. I think Ray is supposed to be Skywalker's daughter, Luke's daughter, which makes a lot of sense. And there's no problem, in my opinion, having Leia train her. I think that's kind of cool. And, I mean, it was addressed several times in the books and and comics that she had learned the Jedi art. She just didn't become a full Jedi. So, there are no Jedi to train her. So, she would be the highest ranking, closest Jedi to train her. So, why not? And... In looking back at, maybe if the movie's exactly the same, but Luke is not an asshole in Last Jedi and tells her that it's his daughter, this is a totally different movie. Luke could still die in Last Jedi. 100%. And Luke could come back to give her a pet talk, just like they do, in Rise Sky, and then the, the the movie makes total sense. You can even kill Snoke. You can kill Snoke, and then you could bring the Emperor back and be like, "Oh, you fucking, I'm pissed now. You 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 know you messed with my major plan because I was going to use Snoke to as a body, whatever, what the fuck he was going to do. That I mean, that would have been uh, so." And that, in my opinion, that would address a lot of the issues that I would have with actually going to Disney World right now. Because for someone who's 37 and actually has grown up on the original six and, and you know, I actually saw the special editions in theaters and I, of course, saw the, um, the prequels in theaters. So I have a much more tie to... That generation, I, I, I've definitely seen the originals without the, the special editions. I could, I could really eat not going to Galaxy Edge and not seeing Leia and not seeing Luke and not seeing Dark Vader. That would start making more sense. And then the story would be that Ben is now the cousin to, to Ray and Ray that it sounds like an awesome thing and then of course she doesn't want to kill her cousin it it just makes so much sense mm. it's a real shame so what we're left with is that Kyo decides to finally help Ray at the end they kill Palpatine she finds out that she's a Palpatine which is bullshit she kills him in the process. She dies like Luke does. And after showing Ben how to save and repair someone from injury, she he gives his entire life force to Ray so that she lives. I have a huge issue about this, and a lot of people do. Okay. Kyle Ren slash Ben Solo cannot live. He has to die. You can't murder every single person. You you try to kill your mother. You killed your dad. You murdered all these people. You slaughtered people. And then you expect to just live. No, you have to die. You have to die. There's nothing wrong with being redemptioned. But you have to die. Even Darth Vader was redempted at the end. But he had to die. He can't just stay alive. So, no disrespect, people, but if Darth Vader, who literally killed the Emperor to save his son, didn't stay alive, then Ben Solo slash Kylo Ren has to do the same. So, for him to die makes complete sense in my mind. I do like the way it was ended does add yes it is fan surface and but if she's supposed to be 
And see, that's where it really dicks at me. She's really, she's really Luke's daughter. If she's Luke's daughter, it makes so much sense for her return to the Moisture Raptors, Moisture Raptors farm, and and go back to the farm and be a farmer. And it makes total sense for her to bury the the like savers in the in the sand outside the farm. Mm. It's a shame. As I mentioned, I gave Last Jedi a three. I'm giving this a four because I think it's a much more engaging movie. I had so much fun and fuck the Last Jedi. And I definitely recommend um Rise of Skywalker. Please give it some love. Go see it. It will be the last Star Wars movie for a long time. So don't hold your grudge. Go see it because it will be the last Star Wars movie for a long time. It might be 10 years before another Star Wars movie is in theaters. So go see it. Enjoy it. Have a great Christmas holiday season. Um, and I will see you guys back later with Yvonne, and we've got a full hour, two hour, uh, watch along of Fight Club, and we got a couple other reviews, so stay tuned guys, we appreciate you guys enjoying our reviews, and of course I love you guys enjoying our, our, our podcast with Total Focus, so Thank you so much for listening to the movie breakdown of Rise of Skywalker. This is your host, Paul. Thanks for staying tuned.